I exist because of U.S. foreign assistance. 53 days. It has been 53 days since Azerbaijan blockaded Artsakh. 120,000 people living in Artsakh are currently experiencing extreme food shortages, no access to vital, vital medical supplies, and no access to fuel. For 53 days, Azerbaijan has played a perverted game of whack-a-mole as it spontaneously cuts off electricity, then restores it, only to next cut off gas, restore it days later, shut down the internet, then bring it back, and so on and so forth. A mundane torture. For 53 days, Armenians around the world have alerted the international community of this critical humanitarian crisis. Yet the international community has been slow to respond. I exist because of U U.S. foreign assistance. One night, during the deportation marches of the genocide, as my grandmother's family slept in the desert, Turkish Ottoman soldiers slaughtered my grandmother's mother, father, and brother. She woke up to her family dead around her. From the marches, she ended up in an orphanage in Lebanon that was eventually run by the Near East Relief, an organization funded by the U.S. government. On this 53rd day, we, Armenian Americans from all over the country, gather here on Capitol Hill to call on the U.S. government to condemn the blockade, stop all aid to Azerbaijan, send immediate humanitarian aid to Artsakh, and for the president to suspend all military aid and, um, inf and enforce Section 907 of the Freedom Support Act. Over the last two days, we visited 442 House offices and 100 Senate offices and held over 90 meetings across the House and Senate to make sure every U.S. representative and senator understands this dire situation in Artsakh. If the role of our congressmen is to represent their constituents, then represent us. We are here. We made our voices heard. We presented specific asks and calls to action. We flew across the country to make sure every office understands, on no uncertain terms, the priorities of their Armenian American constituents. The ball is now in your court and it is time to act. I exist because of U.S. foreign assistance. My grandmother eventually got married and, my father and, uh, and had my father and his siblings. After completing his undergraduate and master's in Lebanon, my dad received a U.S. scholarship to study biochemistry in the U.S. for his Ph.D. Yesterday, we heard some comments from different offices along the lines of, we hear Armenians give their side of the story and then Azeris provide another side, making it difficult to understand the situation. There are no two sides to the story. Azerbaijan has demonstrated a pattern of brutal aggression against the Armenian people over the past several decades. And these aggressions have been documented by independent sources. Azerbaijan may attempt to muddy the waters, but the facts remain undeniably clear. Their goal is to ethnically cleanse Artsakh of Armenians. When did we be begin ignoring the word human and humanitarian? We hear their phrase, cost of human lives, tossed around so often, I wonder that if the U.S. government has put a price for the cost of human life. An actuarial calculation based on where you come from, what resources your country has, where you rank in the world GDP, and other value-added factors. I exist because of U.S. foreign assistance. After his Ph.D., my, my father established his life here in America, raised the family, and here we are now. My dad believed in the American dream. He is a, the American dream realized. Sorry. I exist because of U.S. foreign assistance. But what made the situation over 100 years ago worth the attention and support of the U.S. government then, but not now? How do you decide the cost of a human life? Is it that genocide needs to be actively taking place? It's been 53 days. Wait a little bit longer, the death tolls will start rising. What makes it worth your attention? I understand that it is challenging for our Congress members to relate to or comprehend the hardships and violence faced by this nation tucked 6,000 miles away. But yesterday, we shrunk that distance down to one degree of separation. 
Each office that we visited is now only one degree separated from Armenia. I am the one and the same as my brothers and sisters in Artsakh. They deserve a life of peace in their indigenous homeland, a life with abundant food, a life in which the sound of bombs going off is foreign and not familiar, a life where generations of boys live past the age of 20 because there is no war to draft them into and prematurely take their lives. Condemning the blockade, stopping all aid to Azerbaijan, sending immediate humanitarian aid to Artsakh, and suspending military aid to Azerbaijan is a step in the direction of realizing this dream. Our Congress has a chance to place the U.S. on the right side of history and send a message to Azerbaijan that they cannot act with impunity. Despite the extremely tense and increasingly dire situation in Artsakh, every day I hear a new story of Artsakhsis demonstrating boundless love and kindness for each other. Gev Iskajian of ANC Artsakh said, The untold story of this blockade is about how the people of Artsakh have come together, how they looked out for and taken care of one another, how kindness and generosity have become the new currency of the land. There is hope, there is strength, there is unrelenting love here. I hope every Congress member one day visits Artsakh and experiences the generosity and unbreakable spirit of the people. Maybe one day we'll meet there. Maybe we'll break bread in a peaceful Artsakh.